Okay, so last uh, video, last screen, and that's where all the results come together. What are we What are we looking at? What is it telling us, Ben? Yeah, so we've done the your farm, that first tab over here, these three livestock uh, tabs. Then on this last page, on the right hand side here, we have the kilograms of greenhouse gases, and that's in kgs of um, carbon dioxide, methane, and nitrous nitrous oxide. And as uh, these are in absolute volumes of those gases. So as we come down, and it, we've got a summary of here in kgs, and then rounded to the tons here. Now the, this supports beef and lamb's position as is, um, taking a split gas approach, and, and that this will be uh, where we. Um, useful for us to, um, uh, for farmers going forward. Uh, but then if we come into this other side here, the common conversations are used in CO2 equivalents. So that's taking the warming impact of these gases over 100 years. So the CO2 equivalence is the metric that's used in the general conversations around the, okay. around the So it's one kilogram of carbon dioxide, CO2 is gonna have one kilogram equivalent, but yep. one kilogram of methane, CH4. 25, um, and then nitrous, do nitrous oxide, is 298. Yep. So that, that number there in the, the kilograms of carbon dioxide equivalents is just those ones in the right hand table. Yep. The actual kilos multiplied by those Yeah, by those factors. Yep. And they translate over to here. Uh, there are other metrics around um, because essentially the, taking the split gas approach is that we have a long lived gas and a long lived gas. I, I forget what the half-life of these are, but you're talking hundreds, if not thousands of, of years. Of carbon dioxide yeah, and nitrous oxide. That they remain in the yep. atmosphere. And from memory, the half-life of methane is about 12 years. So it doesn't last as long, but it has a higher warming impact of that. So it behaves a bit differently, and that's beef and lamb's yep. position. Important uh, to treat them differently, not yeah, cause one. Yeah. But to, so people are able to understand with the wider conversations, we've, um, we have converted them into CO2 equivalents over here. So we run down, we've got the livestock, breaking it up by that, and uh, you can see by each of these production streams. Uh, we have got things in the works around that we'll be able to tie it up to some benchmarking data on your wider farm business. Also, oh, I'll come to another bit just in a second, but then we've got our fertiliser, and so our emissions from here from the production side, and we've got a tonnes per, uh, per total hectares. Then coming down here, coming into the vegetation, so we had that block of uh, pines that were um, harvested in the front page, and that counts as an emission down here. Then we come to the vegetation sequestration down here. So what we've produced at the bottom here is netting off in CO2 equivalents. Um, this is just to give you an indicator of where the business is uh -huh. sitting. So emissions from the production side, emissions from deforestation, minus the, um, the uh, sequestration. Uh, and, then it, and then we've got here your net emissions per hectare at the bottom. Now, because of the different treatments of gases and stuff, some people might calculate them different, but this is just to give you an indicator of, of where your business is yep. sitting. So we're, we're looking, I mean, we've, this example was deliberately chosen to have a few outliers or things for people to, to, to show how the tool works. This one, um, we don't have benchmarks yet, they're coming? Yeah, so when I've piloted this and presented this to, um, to farmers, one of the common questions is, is what does this number mean? Yep. Is it a good number or is it a bad number? So our economic service managers, they've done, put in a big shift this year, um, and they've, um, we will have benchmarking data for each class and region. So you won't be comparing your farm against, say if you're in um, uh, East Cape, hard hill country, you're not comparing against with a, a finishing sheep finishing guy down in Southland. So you'll be able to compare like for like, and that'll be coming out as the survey closes out. Yep. So just an interesting one with this, this is our example farm. It um, harvested five hectares of exotic forest, which was 4,000 odd um, tonnes of carbon dioxide equivalent. So that 8,600 there, nearly half of that uh, came in that um, deforestation that year. Yeah. We will be, um, as, as things firm up with Hiwaki Kanoa, we will make changes to reflect um, what, the, what the reporting is, need, uh, is needed. But also we, um, we'll 
trying to lead things along when it comes to the sequestration. So you'll see that we had exotics uh, there. We're looking to get a bit more definition in it and also using averaging. So we're chatting with scientists and, um, and ministries and experts so that we can have the averaging so to make it smooth things out a bit. Out yeah. of it, essentially depreciating the emissions uh -huh. if it's harvested across the period rather than have one a snapshot in one yep. year. But effectively, what we've got on this page is what we said right at the start: we want farmers to know their numbers. Yep. And on this page, you find your emissions and your sequestration and your your net position. Yep. And this is designed to help out with Hiwaki Ekenau. We've got those milestones to hit as as an industry to keep ourselves out of the emission trading scheme. Brilliant. Thanks, Ben. So look, um, across the, the user guide, across these various videos, and uh, hopefully you'll, a number of you get the opportunity to go to one of the workshops where we'll be working through this, helping you work through your own calculation. Um, yeah, it's a reasonably straightforward tool, provided you get that information ready at the start, as I think we talked about in the very first video. So thanks, Ben. Thank you.